morning. Good morning. And welcome to worship at Mount Hebron Presbyterian Church on this fourth Sunday in Easter. Whether you are a member, a friend, a loved one, or just passing through, we are thankful to have you in worship today. If you are visiting with us, we would invite you to please fill out a visitor's card found in the pew, and you can place those in the offering plate as they come around. If you're worshiping with us online, we welcome you and give thanks for the ways that our community of faith stretches beyond boundaries and miles. There is much in store for our community in the coming months, and so as always, I'd invite you to please read through the announcements in the back of the bulletin. Um, but I do have several updates for our community this morning. The first is next Saturday is our nursery school spring fair. So our grounds will come to life with ponies and moon bounces and face painting and all the fabulous things. And of course, we would love for you to come and to be a part of it. Uh, we will have a table uh, for Mount Hebron Presbyterian Church to help introduce ourselves uh, to our nursery school community. Uh, we welcome into music leadership again this week, Dr. Park. We have been so thankful uh, for you helping us the last couple weeks and for continuing to share your amazing gifts with this community. On behalf of personnel, I want to share with you that we did receive the notice of resignation from our amazing office coordinator, Melinda Hughes, um, as she has decided that she would like to go back to a life of retirement. Um, <laughs> Melinda has an amazing talent of stained glass. If you've never seen pictures of those stained glass she creates, it is gorgeous, and she would really like to focus on stained glass. So we surround Melinda with our love, and especially with our gratitude, um, and especially the ways that she has been a support to me, both professionally and personally. Uh, personnel will be meeting this week uh, to discuss next steps and coverage for our office. If you might be willing um, to help us over the next few weeks and months as we work to find somebody, we would be very grateful to have different members willing to come and volunteer to fill in. Uh, Melinda's last day with us will be May 3rd. Um, I would also note that our director of music search continues. Um, our search committee would like to convey that we believe the best form of reference is word of mouth. So just think through all your musical friends and if there's any connections or recommendations of where we might be able to go um, as we continue to seek a new director. Um, our VBS uh, registration is now live. VBS is 15, uh, July 15th to the 19th. And of course, it is only possible because of our amazing volunteers. So if you are planning to volunteer with us again this year, uh, we would be thankful for you to also register so we can start getting a sense of uh, needs that we have. Next week, uh, we will have a brief meeting immediately after worship to provide an update on where we are in the consultant process for our nursery school. Um, you have received communication from me as a part of the annual meeting and then a follow-up email that went to the community sharing that we have sought some guidance from consultants to help us in the relationship. And I just want to provide an update of what we've learned from this process and our next steps. So that will again come immediately after worship uh, for a very brief meeting and really just an opportunity to respond to questions as they emerge. And then finally, I would just note uh, that the Baltimore Presbytery Youth Retreat, which is open to all middle and senior high uh, youth, will be meeting here at Mount Hebron Presbyterian Church on May 4th. The hours go from noon to 9 p.m. in the evening. Um, this is an amazing program that helps our youth with mental health and especially how to support one another uh, with suicide prevention from a faith perspective. Uh, it is a powerful, powerful day, and I hope that our youth will come be a part of it. So let me pause. Are there any an other announcements for our community this morning? Then friends, tomorrow um, is Earth Day, and so I also just want to celebrate the many ways that this church cares and tends to creation from our SWAT team and the highway pickup to the ways we preserve and protect this beautiful property and land that we have to even the partnership we have with our congregations as we're seeking some different tree planting initiatives and things like that. We continue to turn our eyes to the creator who creates all things and calls it good and calls us to be shepherds to our world. Friends, let us lift up our hearts as we come before God in worship.
Good morning. morning. Please join us in the call to worship. The doors are open, the good shepherd calls, come in to find a place of comfort and safety. We turn away from our weariness and fear. We leave behind our anxiety and cares. There is bread here to feed our every need. There are still waters to refresh our souls. We would devote ourselves to learning and praying. We seek to live in genuine community. There are tasks for all those of glad and generous heart. Find strength in this hour to follow the way of Christ. Praise God for this time set apart. Praise God for refreshment and renewal. Today's opening poem is I Arise Today. by by John O'Donohue. Praise today in the name of silence, womb for the word in the name of stillness, home of belonging in the name of the solitude of the soul and the earth. I arise today, blessed by all things, wings of breath, delight of eyes, wonder of whisper, intimacy of touch, eternity of soul, urgency of thought, miracle of health, embrace of God. May I live this day compassionate of heart, clear in word, gracious in awareness, courageous in thought, and generous in love. Let's join together singing hymn number 720, Jesus Calls Us. be seated. Here, our call to confession. We have been given the model of Jesus Christ who came that we might have life and have it abundantly. Though reviled, Christ did not revile in return. While suffering, Christ did not threaten. As we think about our own ways of meeting criticism, rejection, in opposition, let us consider how we are following Christ. Prayer of confession. O oh God, it is easy to stray from the best we know. Before we realize it, we are lost in our fears, dominated by life's shadows, preoccupied with our own suffering. We complain of our lot even though our cups overflow with your goodness and mercy. We are reluctant givers and ineffective followers. Turn us around, God, for we want to be disciples. Amen.
hear these assurance of pardon. We seek God's grace with boldness because we trust in Jesus Christ, the one who loves us and laid down his life for us. This is the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the song of celebration of forgiveness. of God, we are filled with Christ's peace. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Friends, please take this moment to just look around at one another as we exchange signs of peace. The peace of Christ be with you. And to our friends who worship from home, may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Be with you. And I now would like to invite any children who are with us today to come on down for our time with all God's children. Charades is a game where I'm not allowed to use any words. That's right, or something. It's gonna, and, and we're gonna guess what it is. So I'm gonna use my body, and you're gonna, without using any words, and you're going to try to guess what I'm acting out. So the first thing is, oh. love. what did you say? Love. love. Good. They are good. They got. That's right. Okay, the next one. Let's see. Can I go, go, go ahead. Yes, yeah. come on up. Come on up. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah. Come over here. Come over here. Oh, let's see. Kindness. Kindness. That's good. Serving. That's excellent. Good, good, good. All right, one more. Let's see. Making sure every single person here knows that they belong. So in our Bible, Jesus tells us to love and to welcome each other. But we do this more than just our words. It's not enough to say, well, you know you're welcome here. You want to show them. <laughs> you want to show them in your actions and in your body. So let's think about a Sunday morning. What is something you could do to show some to show that you love somebody? What do you think? Uh, hug them. Hug them. That's a beautiful way. Welcome. That's good. What can you do? Red. I wonder if we will definitely play charades. Maybe when we have a Sunday school class or a youth event, when we have a little more time, we will definitely keep playing because I too like games. But what do you think is a way that you can show somebody you love them? What do you think? Well, give them Huggy! Flowers. Give them flowers! Give them flowers! I love that! Yeah, that's good. I have to go another day. 
Oh, that's, that's, a, that's one way too. Ask them to go on a date. That's an idea. That's good. I would like to go on record. That was not my message, everybody. Yes, that's good. I love that. One of the first things you can do is introduce your name. When somebody comes in, if you don't recognize them right away, you might say, hi, my name's Amy. What's your name? There we go. Hi, my name's Amy. What's your name? Matthew. Hi, my name's Amy. What's your name? Hi, my name's Amy. What's your name? <laughs> okay, great. How about, how about, hi, my name's Amy. What's your name? Maybe. Maybe. And Quinn. Because no, our, because our names show us how loved and belonging we are. Let us pray. Dear God, help us to show love, not just with our words, but with our whole being. And all God's children said, Amen. And you may go out to the fellowship hall with Miss Susan, knowing you are a beloved child of God. Now for the prayer for illumination. Lord God, good shepherd, by the leading of your spirit, help us to listen for your voice and follow in your paths all the days of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. The first scripture reading is Psalm number 23, a Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. This morning is referred to as the Good Shepherd Sunday. As the fourth Sunday of Easter every year in the Revised Common Lectionary, we find text from John's Gospel, chapter 10, and each year kind of rotates through the sections. And as one commentator pointed out, he said that just like when you're waiting for that release of a new season to come out on Netflix, you need to start with previously on, and so previously, in the Gospel of John, in chapter 9, we had the story of the man who was born blind. And Jesus healed him, and he found this new belonging in the community of Jesus. And then in chapter 10, verse 1, we start to get this language of Jesus saying, I am. I am the gate. I am the good shepherd. So this morning, our bulletin has printed John chapter 10, verse 11 through 18, but I'm going to sprinkle in um, some passages from earlier, um, beginning with verse 3, and then I will continue on to verse 10. Listen now for the word of the Lord. He calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. When he has brought all of his own, he goes on ahead of them. And his sheep follow him because they know his voice. I have come so that they might have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd, does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. 
The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice, so that there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My senior year of college, after four long years of an education, the long-awaited day of graduation finally came. Waiting in line to walk the stage, my heart was beating in my chest, and I eagerly awaited the moment when I would hear my name. And as I stepped up as the next person in line, I heard an unfamiliar omelin ring out over the speaker. I completely froze. Looking around frantically, I thought, who's omelin? I looked around to the gentleman behind me, and I figured his name was not Amelin. And then finally, Amy said, someone said, Amy, that's you. You see, my name is Amy Lynn. And the person reading the names was just reading words on a page. She didn't know my name. She didn't know who I was or what I had done for the last four years. And in all fairness, I didn't know her either. I didn't recognize her voice, and neither did my family, I might add, who almost missed my graduation walk, which really became more of a graduation trot as I hurried to <laughs> catch up across the stage. There is so much power in the identity of a name. It's more than just letters or words that come together. A name speaks to identity. It's who you are. It's what you respond to. From the first moment we are born, a little band is put on our arms that identifies our name. In the hospital, as the nurses and doctors come in every hour on the hour, the first thing they ask you is, what is the name? Ensuring that they are with the one for whom they belong to, the family that has claimed and named them. And in our scripture this morning, we hear the story of the Good Shepherd, who calls his sheep his own and calls them by name. He knows the sheep, the scripture says, and the sheep know him. Biblical scholar Caroline Lewis says that we cannot read the story of the Good Shepherd without first reading the story of the man born blind. She says, abundant life for the man born blind is more than a physical healing. He is now a sheep belonging to Jesus' own, Jesus' flock. So his healing and this new abundant life comes not only from the healing of the body, but the healing of the whole with this new community of belonging. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. And the good shepherd, this language, comes right out of Ezekiel, which outlines what constitutes a false shepherd. If you have time later this week, I would encourage you to open your scripture and read through Ezekiel 34. Because in Ezekiel 34, we learn that a false shepherd thinks only of themselves. A false shepherd does not take care of the flock, Ezekiel says, or strengthen the weak, or heal the sick, or bound up the injured. A false shepherd does not go looking for the one who has gone astray. A false shepherd is everything that we believe Jesus is not. Our passage is one of the I am statements in John's gospel. 
And I am, in our Hebrew text, is the name for God. Remember, I am who I am. So in John, when we hear this language, I am the vine, I am the gate, I am the good shepherd, it does two things for us. The first is it clearly identifies that Jesus is divine. I am who I am, and I am of God. The second thing it does in this story, then, is it introduces that Jesus is, I am, the good shepherd. Jesus does look out for the ones who have gone astray. Jesus strengthens the weak. Jesus heals the sick. Jesus bounds up the injured. Jesus cares for the fullness of the flock. And, as we see in the coming weeks of Holy Week in John's text, Jesus will lay down his life for his own. This word good also comes with an added meaning in the Greek of a modeling. So while Jesus alone is the good shepherd, Jesus is modeling what those who follow him should do, how they should be if they are one belonging to this flock. Perhaps you've heard me share this before, but in small sheep pens, it is said that a shepherd will lay down at the entrance of the gate and use their bodies as a physical barrier, preventing any intruders from coming in or any wandering sheep to go out. The shepherds get down on the ground, down in the muck and mud, and they use their physical bodies to protect their flock, which is different than other forms of leadership that we see. Biblical commentator Eric Thistler this week introduced the concept of a Judas goat. Now, goats and sheep, they have some similarities, but they also have some pretty significant differences. Goats will go into new territory. They'll go into places they've never been before, whereas sheep usually do not. So Eric says that there's something called a Judas goat, which is trained to lead a herd of sheep where they need to go because the sheep will follow the goat. Now, some Judas goats are trained to lead the sheep into new pastures or to when they need to take them to a new sheep pen. Other Judas goats are trained to lead the sheep to the slaughterhouse. And this is the difference between what it means to be a, le a leader and what it means to be a shepherd. What it means to be the one who gets down in the mud and the muck and uses their physical being, their whole selves, to protect the flock at all possible costs. Jesus is not just calling those who follow them to be leaders. He is calling them to embody what it means to care for and to shepherd to be the voice that names and claims and demonstrates how to belong to the fold. But even more than that, Jesus is coming in pretty clear here to say he's also calling them to be really to sacrifice, to sacrifice a piece of themselves or whatever it might take to make sure that all are brought in to the whole. Yesterday, I officiated a wedding for two of our members here at church, and afterwards, I went to a lunch reception, and I sat down at the table with people I mostly had never met before, and we started out the way you always do, introducing your name, some small talk about what do you do, where do you live. But as the afternoon went on, we started to get to know each other's stories. We learned the rhythms and, most importantly, the wild sense of humor of some of the members at the table. I have to say, I'm not sure I remember the last time I laughed so hard, especially with a group of strangers. As the afternoon went on, other tables and guests started leaving, and so those who remained came and started to kind of gather in around our table. And finally, at one point, one of the members sitting at our table saw them gathering in, and she stood up, picked up her chair, and she widened the circle. A friend of mine recently reminded me of the difference between being included and belonging. The difference between being included and belonging. Now, I would argue every church would say that they are inclusive 
opening the doors on a Sunday morning and welcoming anybody who wanders into the pew to come. Inclusive is opening the doors. Belonging is standing up, picking up your chair, and widening the circle to ensure that every single person who comes in has an equal place at the table. And people experiencing, experience this widening of the circle in different ways. They experience it first and foremost when they are seen, when we learn their name and we use their name as they're coming in. They experience this in structures of leadership, when they hear that their voice is acknowledged and represented at the table. They see this and feel this in the way that they are welcomed into the space. Jesus says, oh yes, there are other sheep pens, but they all belong to me. And all of us are one body, one flock, belonging to one another. One of our Bible study members this week observed on Tuesday night how something we love about the Presbyterian church is a belonging at the table. That anybody who comes in is welcome to receive the sacrament. And we said we love this because you never know how that nourishment of the bread and wine might cause some kind of transformation. You never know what somebody who maybe doesn't have a history at church, how they will experience what it feels like to come forward, to have a place at the table, and to know that wherever they are in their journey of faith, they are welcome and safe here with us. And there are different ways for us to embody this kind of belonging in the way that we are called into every piece of our shared life together. The Good Shepherd calls us into belonging. A life where we are named and claimed and see ourselves as belonging to the fold. The Good Shepherd calls us to get down in the mud and the muck and to use our very being to protect at all possible costs. And the Good Shepherd calls us not to just lead others to Jesus, or what we said with our children, to just tell people about Jesus, but to actually embody in our actions what it feels like to be seen by and loved by Jesus. And so this week, I wonder what this might look like for you. Where will there be a moment where you can learn somebody's name and then actually try to use it when you're talking to them? For where will you pick up your chair and widen the circle? For where will you show that you are willing to lay something down, to sacrifice something in order to protect and to serve them? For I do believe that it is in these thin spaces that we experience abundant life. And you never know, it might be in these thin spaces that you actually save somebody's life. May it be so. Amen. Let's join together reciting the affirmation of faith. We believe in a God who shows up in our lives surprising in catching us off guard in the best of ways. We believe in a God who cares for God's people, a shepherd who longs for her sheep to be fed and tended. We believe in a God who took on flesh, a God whose love changed the world as we know it. We believe that this here and now God invites us out of the boat calling ordinary people like Peter, like us, into a life of service and community. And so we give our hearts, we give our whole hearts, and nothing less. Amen. Let's join together in hymn number 802, The King of Love is, The King of Love My Shepherd Is.
You may be seated. One of the great gifts of belonging to a community of faith is the time we take each week to hold one another in prayer. We pray for John Techie, who is about to begin some rehab or cardiac rehab uh, following his heart attack, so we surround him with love and support. What other prayers do we have for the community this day? How can we pray for you? Jim. Good morning, everyone. Um, there's an update from my grandma, which is good, and part of a little bit, um, you know, sad, but uh, at least she was, last time she was not able to recognize anyone when we, even though her eyes were open, and this time she, she was closing her eyes because she has lack of energy, but she was able to recognize everyone's voices, including our children, mm. and she was nodding and started to cry when, um, with happiness when mm. she heard uh, great grandma, I love you, when our kids said that. So, um, uh, so my <laughs> uncles and aunts are, are thinking, okay, are we going for the funeral or do we need to ask her to fight her? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> ask her to fight back really, really hard because the doctors were thinking like one week or something, but she's, she is a fighter right now and uh, looks like um, we don't know yet or mm -hmm. anything. And um, one uh, other relieving thing was that uh, Alex and Nelly and Matthew Matthew was not, uh, did not know what was happening, so he just went to do his other thing <laughs> right afterwards. But um, Alex and Ellie got really, really sad, and they were saying, I only spent like three hours with her in Korea. I want to go back and stuff. Mm -hmm. And they were crying mm -hmm. because they know it sh like they're losing their great-grandma. Mm -hmm. And I told, told them, well, it looks like God is calling her, you know, let her be in peace because she is a fighter in her young ages. And after uh, crying a little bit, Ellie drew a picture to me and showed it and um, shared to my mom. And my mom was crying hard because it was a picture of God uh, opening his hands with a lot of hearts mm -hmm. and flowers and she Ellie told me this is what grandma will see if she goes to heaven wow. so my mom was so relieved at her picture mm -hmm. and drawing so yeah that's an update so please keep praying for us um, my oldest sisters um, haven't seen her yet because it's it's really hard with mm. pandemic still in Korea and um, it's it's like a lottery system to see <laughs> if their uh, their their uh, relatives there so mm. just keep praying for my grandma and my side of the family thank you oh Jin we pray for you and we are grateful for this tender thin space that she is in and for the power that comes sometimes from children and what they and what they share and proclaim. Thank you. Pray for you. From online. Cecilia uh, Cecilia says, prayers for the Eckman family for the loss of James Eckman. Joy for Holly and Ashley. Thank you. Thank you. We give thanks for Holly and Ashley and we pray for Jim. Thank you, Jim's family. Other prayers from the community this day. Trusting that God hears prayers we speak out loud and ones we hold in the tenderness of our heart, let us bow our heads before God. O oh, holy God, in the beginning you created it all and you called it good. And then you called us as human beings to care for and to tend this earth. <coughs> we recognize, O oh God, that there have been ways when we have fallen short. When we have seen ourselves as separate from this earth, separate from this world, rather than belonging to a piece of it. 
as we go through this week, oh God, give us a centering and how we belong to one another and we also belong to this creation and that we are called to be stewards and to care for it. God, each of us come into this space in such different places. Some come with joy and celebration, looking forward to graduations, celebrating new weddings, birthdays, anniversaries. Some of us come, oh God, with grief that we wear on us like a blanket, holding us down. We pray, oh God, for you to break through, to remind us of the light that comes, of this caring community that is willing to get down in the mud and the muck in order to say that you are not alone, for I am here with you, that I will do anything and everything and all to show you that you are loved and that you are not alone. We are grateful for the friends that we can text when we are in those moments where we are not feeling our best. We are grateful for the one on the other end of the call, and especially, O oh God, for the wisdom that comes from children and from the promise of resurrection, that there is so much life that is beyond what we could even comprehend or understand, and that in Jesus Christ and in the resurrection we see that you are calling us into life abundance. Into the silence, O oh God, listen as we bring prayers that we have on our hearts this day. Oh God, we pray for peace in the Middle East. We pray for all those leaders around the world who are seeking to be proclaimers of justice and to bring reconciliation to war-torn, broken land. Help us, O oh God, to keep our eyes on you, to remember that you alone are the good shepherd, that you are the God who has created and the God that calls us forward to embody that type of love and protection for all humankind, one body, one flock. We lift up these prayers trusting that you are with us, moving through and in all things, calling us forward into a life of light and love and abundance. We offer this prayer as together we bring our voices, praying the prayer which Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the goods of the world and sees a brother or sister in need, yet refuses to help? With love for God and neighbor, let us offer our lives to the Lord.
prayer of dedication. Gracious God, we give you thanks that you have shown us the meaning of love through Jesus Christ. Show us, O Holy One, how to share Christ's love by giving our lives for one another. To the glory of your whole holy name, amen. Let's join together in singing hymn number 726, Will You Come and Follow Me? siblings in Christ go out into this world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Honor everyone. Love and serve the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. Go this day in the name of our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. <laughs>